SOP for COVID-19 issued by MOE last April still applicable. Efficient preparations essential to ensure success of Visit Malaysia Year 2026. Good evening and salam Malaysia Madani. Thanks for joining us. I'm Anto Othman and you're watching Malaysia Tonight. And the standard operating procedures related to the curbing of the spread of COVID-19 in schools and educational institutions issued last April by the Ministry of Education is still applicable. Deputy Education Minister Wong Ka Wo said the SOPs involve having the school staff to do self-tests if they have symptoms and always maintain personal hygiene. DM menggalakkan pemakaian mas uh, uh, kepada para guru dan juga murid-murid. Itu merupakan satu galakan dan itu terbakai sehingga kini. Yang bergejala, uh, mereka haruslah mengadakan ujian kediri di rumah. As the issue of COVID-19 may change from time to time, Wong said the Education Ministry will always collaborate with the Ministry of Health regarding the methods or SOPs to prevent the spread of the disease. He added that matters related to the SOPs would be finalized after discussions with the health ministry. Asked if the ministry will temporarily close schools affected by the spread of COVID-19, Wong said the ministry will handle each case carefully and seek advice from the health ministry for further action if the situation becomes serious. Regarding school uniforms, Wong said thus far the Education Ministry has not discussed the matter and no decision has been made on the time frame for the relaxation of sportswear for schools nationwide. He said although the weather is back to normal now, there are still several schools in the East Coast states affected by the flood disaster. Sekolah-sekolah di Pantai Dimo yang mana telah pun dilanda dengan uh, dengan uh, bencana banjir dan bagi pihak KPM kita selalu uh, kita selalu berpegang kepada prinsip kemanus, uh, kemanusiawi yang mana uh, kita mahu memberikan kesenangan dan kelonggaran kepada budak-budak kita uh, un, uh, dalam pembelajaran mereka. A total of 395,870 candidates have registered to sit for the Sijil Pelajaran Malaysia or SPM 2023 examination at 3,340 examination centres nationwide. Now, the Ministry of Education said 129,635 invigilators have been appointed to ensure the smooth management of the examination. The ministry reminds all candidates to refer to the examination timetable to obtain information on the date, time, code and examination papers as well as instructions. The timetable can be downloaded from the examination syndicate website as shown on the screen. Candidates are also reminded to bring identification documents and examination registration statements to the examination center to comply with standard operating procedures and rules. They are also advised to inform the school or the state education department immediately if they are unable to attend the designated examination center or any nearby center due to a disaster. The ministry is ready with the prompt mechanisms and measures including cooperating with other relevant government agencies in facing any possible disaster including floods during the examination. The delivery of aid and the formation of the policy should be more effective through the introduction of the Central Database Hub or PADU. Director, Malaysian Inclusive Development and Advancement Institute, University Kebangsaan Malaysia, Professor Tan Sri Dr. Nur Aznan Ghazali, welcomes the development of PADU based on the latest and complete data. However, he said that in order to ensure PADU achieves its goals, several things need to be clarified. In particular, the needs to clearly interpret net disposable income for all segments of the population, including the self-employed. Based on a specific definition, net disposable income is obtained after deducting mandatory expenses such as taxes, EPF and SOXO contributions from the total income. 
The involved ministries also need to list the eligible fixed commitment categories to be deducted. Since there are 39 pieces of information that need to be updated in the PADU portal, the relevant ministries need to publicize all the required information needed to facilitate the registration process and data entry. As a national database hub, it is preferable for PADU to be placed under the Department of Statistics Malaysia. He also requested that researchers be given the best access to use PADU data. PADU will be launched by Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim at Putra Jaya International Convention Centre, PICC, tomorrow. The mission to end hardcore poverty in the country, especially in Sabah and Sarawak, might take longer time than the target duration set by the government. Chief Executive Officer of the Institute for Development Studies, Sabah, Associate Professor Datuk Dr. Ramza Dambul, said this is due to several factors, such as the wide geographical areas as well as the lack of infrastructures. Elaborating further on the matter, Associate Professor Dato Dr. Ramza said the aspect of enablers provided in the state's needs to be improved, especially the basic facilities that can drive and create opportunities for residents to generate their income. 50% yep. lebih daripada 50% penduduk Sabah berada di kawasan luar bandar mm -hmm. dan mereka inilah yang majoritinya tergolong dalam miskin tegar dan kenapa wujud miskin, miskin tegar bukan sahaja isu tentang ekonomi peluang ekonomi yang tidak ada tetapi kerana infrastrukturnya enablenya tidak ada misalnya sistem pengangkutan mm -hmm. sistem persekolahan yang lebih baik sistem kesihatan yang lebih baik dan segalanya jadi saya fikir uh, untuk menghapuskan kemiskinan itu, enabler-enabler ini perlu dibangunkan terlebih dahulu dan itu sudah tentu akan mengambil masa yang lebih panjang. The government previously has set the target of ending hardcore poverty in the country by the end of 2023. The Election Commission has no plans to carry out a redenomination of electoral boundaries for states in the peninsula and Sabah as the eight-year interval period is still ongoing. EC Chairman Tan Sri Abdul Ghani Saleh said for Sarawak, the Commission is considering and evaluating the sustainability of conducting such an exercise. Tantri Abdul Ghani said a redelineation exercise could only be carried out after the expiration of the eight-year interval period from the date of the completion of the previous exercise or when there are amendments to the composition of members of the Dewan Rakyat or state legislative assemblies. He added that any redelineation proposal would only commence upon notification to the Dewan Rakyat Speaker and the Prime Minister by the EC and a notice published as provided under Part 2, Section 4, 13 Schedule of the Federal Constitution. He also said that under Article 113 of the Federal Constitution, the EC shall, from time to time, as they deem necessary, review the division of the Federation and the states into constituencies based on principles and procedures established by the Federal Constitution. The principles include facilitating all voters to cast their votes during the election and that electoral boundaries do not cross state borders. decision not to follow U.S. interest rate hikes successfully supported domestic growth. The Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, MOTAC, is targeting 35.6 million tourist rifles in conjunction with the Visit Malaysia Year 2026 or VMY 2026. Its minister, Dr. Sri Tiong King Singh, said all strategic and efficient preparations are essential to activate the VMY 2026 campaign to maximize the economic impact and establish Malaysia as a key global tourism destination. We are in 2026 mengiaskan kehadiran 35.6 juta pelancongan asing datang anggaran belanja domestik sebanyak RM147.1 billion. 
kerjasama strategik yang melibatkan kerajaan kerajaan negeri berbagai kementerian agensi dan pengiat industri serta sokongan daripada rakyat adalah sangat penting dalam memastikan bahawa program yang dirancang bagi tiga tahun ke hadapan mampu memberi impak ekonomi antara Ottoman. The minister also said that MOTAC is ready to assist all states, including the four states which are implementing 2024 visit year, namely Malacca, Pera, Perlis and Kelantan, to achieve their tourist targets as planned. Malacca, for instance, has received an additional 2 million ringgit from the ministry. Apart from Malacca, however, only Pera expressed its interest to apply for additional funds for the purpose of promoting the state's tourism. The Pera government's target of attracting 8 million domestic tourists and 350,000 international tourists as well as generating 10 billion ringgit in revenue can be achieved with the collaborative effort of the people in promoting Visit Pera Year 2024. Menteri Besar Datuk Seri Sarani Muhammad said the multiracial communities in the state can help attract tourists by sharing the beauty of every part of Pera on various social media platforms. He said each of the communities serves as both an ambassador and a spokesperson for the state, and they should promote Pera as a preferred tourist destination by highlighting its historical and cultural significance, as well as its distinct charm. At the launch of Visit Pera Year 2024, the Menteri Besar said the program would not be a success without the cooperation of all the people of Pera, regardless of how well it is planned or how much money is spent on it. The decision of Bank Negara Malaysia not to follow the aggressive interest rate hikes by the United States throughout 2023 has successfully supported domestic growth. Now, economic expert Professor Dr. Jomo Kwame Sundaram believes that this measure has also successfully reduced the burden on the people with high indebtedness. Despite criticisms regarding the effect of maintaining the OPR, the local currency has begun to recover after the United States eased its interest rate policy. Amerika Syarikat sudah sendiri tidak akan meningkatkan uh, kadar bunganya lagi. Dan akibatnya kita dapati bahawa uh, tekanan terhadap ma uh, mata wang ringgit itu sudah mula reda. Hmm. Dan ini sudah tentu akan membantu dan saya rasa akhirnya yeah. dunia akan melihat negeri-negeri seperti Malaysia, seperti Jepun dan sebagainya hmm. yang tidak terikut-ikut sangat dengan dengan uh, uh, Amerika. Bank, uh, hmm. uh, mereka itu uh, berjaya dan ekonomi mereka itu uh, telah uh, ter, ter, selamatlah patut ditinggalkan Professor Dr Jomo said this when speaking on RTM's narrative khas Imbasan 2023 program in Angkasa Puri since May the OPR rate has remained at 3% with an increase of 25 basis points from the previous rate of 2.75%. China has made steady progress in pursuing high-quality development in 2023 and achieved a smooth transition in its COVID-19 response efforts, with the country's economy sustaining the momentum of recovery. Chinese President Xi Jinping said in his 2024 New Year address that China's modernized industrial system has been further upgraded and a number of its advanced, smart and green industries are rapidly emerging as new pillars of the economy. He noted that thanks to years of dedicated efforts, China's innovation-driven development is full of energy. The achievements recorded include the C919 large passenger airliner entering commercial service, the Shenzhou spaceships continuing their missions in space, and the deep sea manned submersible Fendolze reaching the deepest ocean trench. Z added products designed and made in China, especially trendy brands, are also highly popular with consumers. He said new energy vehicles, lithium batteries and photovoltaic products are a testimony to China's manufacturing prowess. 
While pursuing its development, he said China has also embraced the world and fulfilled its responsibility as a major country. Sri Lanka slapped a new 18% value-added tax on fuel, mobile phones and computers from today to raise desperately needed revenue ahead of a foreign debt restructuring. An earlier value-added tax of 15% on other consumer goods was also increased to 18% as the government sought to shore up its finances while Sri Lanka emerges from its worst economic crisis. President Ranil Wickremen Singh said that in order to achieve economic stability, the country must continue to forge ahead in the demanding path on that is not adorned with flowers but presents formidable challenges. Months of civil unrest sparked by the economic crisis forced the resignation of then-president Gotabaya Rajapaksa when protesters stormed his residence in July 2022. His successor, Wikramen Singh, has raised taxes and cut government subsidies to comply with an international monetary fund bailout and crack down on anti-government protests. The IMF rescue program requires him to finalize by May a restructure of the island country's $46 billion external debt after government default in 2022. The higher taxes kicked in as the government negotiated with its bilateral lenders and sovereign bondholders to reschedule repayments, a key condition of the IMF bailout. The U.S. Financial Services Corporation Fidelity, which helped U.S. billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk procure social media platform X for about $44 billion, believes that the platform has lost some 71.5% in its value since the acquisition deal was sealed. In a Fidelity's new disclosure that runs through the end of November 2023, the corporation has again marked down the value of its shares in X. The corporation does not necessarily have much or any inside information on the platform's financial performance, despite helping Musk purchase X and having shares in the platform. Fidelity also believes that X lost some 10.7% in its value in November 2023, when Musk lashed out at advertisers at an online event for refusing to do business with X against the background of the billionaire's statements. Musk bought Twitter for an estimated $44 billion in October 2022. Twitter Corporation ceased to exist as a separate company as a result of its merger with X Corp in April 2022. In late July, Twitter's logo was changed from a blue bird to a black and white X logo. And I hope you guys Coming up in our foreign segment, massive earthquake prompts tsunami warning for Japan's western coast. Israel warned its war against Hamas will continue throughout 2024 as unrelenting strikes killed two dozen people in Gaza as the Palestinian group fired a rocket barrage at the stroke of midnight in what it called a response to the massacres of civilians. Israeli military spokesman Daniel Hagari said that some of the 300,000 army reservists got a break from the war in order to prepare for the prolonged fighting ahead. Heavy artillery fire again pounded targets in Hamas-run Gaza, killing at least 24 people, Palestinian Health Ministry officials said, with attacks reported across the length of the territory. In the besieged Gaza Strip, the United Nations said 85% of the population have been displaced. It added that, that Palestinians are also facing dire shortages of food, water, fuel and medicine. UN Chief Antonio Guterres has also condemned the epic human suffering and the collective punishment of Palestinian civilians, while the WHO has warned of the risk of hunger and infectious disease. A series of strong earthquakes with major ones measuring up to 7.6 magnitude struck the central Japanese prefecture of Ishikawa today. A major tsunami warning has been issued by the Japan Meteorological Agency, or JMA, for Noto region, 
urging people to evacuate immediately following tsunami warnings for Niigata, Toyama and Ishikawa prefectures of the Japan seaside of the country. The agency warned that hazardous tsunami waves of up to 5 meters were possible along the north coast of central Japan within 300 kilometers of the quake's epicenter. A tsunami of 1.2 meters was confirmed to have arrived in Wajima City in Ishikawa Prefecture, but a much higher tsunami of 5 meters was expected to arrive in Noto in the same region. The JMA said the Noto region on the sea of Japan's side of Japan's main island of Honshu experienced a rapid succession of quakes, starting with a 5.7 magnitude tremor at 4.06 p.m. local time. This was followed by a 7.6 magnitude quake at 4.10 p.m. and a 6.1 magnitude quake at 4.18 p.m. Meanwhile, the government spokesman Yoshimasa Hayashi said no irregularities have been detected at nuclear power plants in Japan following the earthquake. Utilities provider Hokuriku Electric Power's Shika plant in Ishikawa Prefecture, the closest facility to the quake's epicenter, was among those reporting no damage. Hayashi added that the authorities were still checking the extent of damage and warned residents to prepare for possible further quakes. Hokuriku Electric Power Company said more than 36,000 houses are experiencing power outages. The Japan's government has set up an emergency response office at the Prime Minister's office in Tokyo. Now, some 3,200 police officers were on the streets in Berlin for New Year's Eve as new police policies were implemented after celebrations last year were overshadowed by violent clashes with revelers barricading first responders attempting to reach the sick. Certain areas considered trouble spots were cordoned off with manned access points where people going in were bag-checked and patted down for fireworks or objects considered dangerous. The areas remained blocked off with access only via police controls until early Monday. Police had warned residents in advance with mixed views from people trying to get through over whether it was effective or not. Youth riots that erupted in Berlin on New Year's Eve of 2022 saw dozens of police officers, firefighters, rescue workers, pedestrians and journalists injured during attacks as young men lobbed firecrackers and started fires in the streets of the German capital at the turn of the year. Police detained 145 people, including 45 Germans, 27 Afghans, and 21 Syrians. The majority of the incidents were in neighborhoods with higher immigrant population. Coming up in sports, Harimau Malaya on best footing to face Asian Cup. Glad to be part of the Harimau Malaya squad, Spanish-Malaysian midfielder Natsuo Insa has vowed to help Malaysia do well at the Asian Cup 2023 in Doha, Qatar. With 20 years of professional football experience, the 37-year-old JDT player claimed he is more mature and capable of keeping his cool during high-pressure games, which will benefit Kim Pangon's squad. Despite facing higher-ranked teams in the group, Natso believes Malaysia have a chance to qualify for the round of 16. He said the current national team has become more professional in all aspects compared to the last time he was with the team in 2018. I'm so happy to be here then in this important tournament. So I just pray that I can help the team to achieve great things. But to be honest, uh, we have a really, really good team, good players, younger players, uh, also younger players who are playing too many games. The last year they have good experience, so I think it's going to be good for, for all. We can achieve uh, pass the group. Or I think we, we must to, to believe and go game by game and work hard. No? Natsu was met before the team left for Doha, Qatar at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport yesterday. Malaysia have never advanced to the last 16 of the Asian Cup in previous three editions. 
Japan warmed up for the Asian Cup with a 5-0 win over Thailand in Tokyo as coach Hajime Moriyasu prepared to name his squad for the tournament. Moriyasu fielded an inexperienced lineup missing several overseas-based players against a Thailand side that is also heading to Qatar for the Asian Cup which kicks off on January 12. Ao Tanaka broke the deadlock for the four-time Asian champions five minutes into the second half in front of a New Year's Day crowd of more than 60,000. Keto Nakamura added a second before a Thailand own goal, a header from Takumu Kawamura and a late Takumi Minamino strike completed the scoring. Moriyasu was set to name his 26-man squad after the game, with injured Brighton winger Kaoru Mitoma doubtful to make the cut. Liverpool midfielder Wataru Endo and Arsenal defender Takehiro Tomiyasu were expected to be selected for the tournament, along with Real Sociedad attacking midfielder Takefuso Kubo. Japan have been drawn in Group D at the Asian Cup and will face Indonesia, Iraq and Vietnam in the first round. Thailand are in Group F and will play Saudi Arabia, Kyrgyzstan and Oman. Arsenal's Premier League title challenge suffered another blow in a 2-1 defeat at Fulham last night as Tottenham beat Burnmouth 3-1 to close in their North London rivals. Now The Gunners' high hopes of a first league title in 20 years have been rocked by two damaging defeats in four days. Mikel Arteta was looking for a response after losing 2-0 at home to West Ham on Thursday, but was left angered by what he described as his side's worst performance of the season. Arsenal had started brightly at Croven Cottage as Bukayo Saka pounced to tap home his first goal in six games after Bernd Leno paired Gabriel Martinelli's initial effort. But the Vistas failed to build on their early advantage and Fulham hit back to snap a three-game losing run in their Premier League without even scoring a goal. Raul Juminez was badly missed during his three-game ban for a red card at Newcastle and the Mexican kick-started the Fulham fight back with his fourth goal in as many games. Arsenal failed to clear a corner and the ball broke kindly for Bobby de Cordova Reed to smash home from close range in the second half. Arsenal remain in fourth, two points behind leaders Liverpool and level on 40 points with Manchester City, but having played a game more than both their title rivals. Well, that concludes this edition of Malaysia Tonight. In our top story, SOP for COVID-19 issued by MOE last April, still applicable. Now we leave you with visuals from New York City's Times Square, where thousands of revelers cheering in the new year with the annual ceremony of the descending crystal-clad ball. Till then, I'm Otto Othman. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Happy New Year 2024, and thank you for watching.